Hey guys, what's going on? It's Nock. Welcome along to episode number four of my Minecraft Let's Play. A little bit hard to believe really that we are in episode number four already, but how time flies. We've seemed to have made so much progress. In today's episode, we're going to be heading over to the village across the water. Now, hopefully our actions haven't already destroyed the village and there are some villages left. So this episode, we're going to head on over there and try and create a perimeter and fortify the village to make it a bit safer. And then in the next episode, we can look at starting a breeding program and getting some good trade set up with some of the villagers. Now there have been some changes in between episodes and I felt when I showed them in the last episode it got kind of a little bit long and drawn out. So this time around I've done a really quick two minute summary. So here's what I've been doing in between episodes. We headed on into the nether to stockpile some more quartz because let's be honest from our first nether session we didn't really get a lot of it so I wanted to stockpile a little bit more. We also moved and rebuilt our nether portal to the correct size and coordinates. We created full enchanted diamond armor, which was great, although it kind of left us a little bit short in the resource department. So back down the mine we headed to gather some resources and iron was at the top of that list because we were expanding our melon farm, making it two and a half times bigger. So we needed iron for extra hoppers and bits and pieces. I also added a lever, which put the pistons down to turn the farm off if I get sick to death of hearing it going off all the time. Now that we've got an abundance of quartz, I also added comparators and repeaters to my auto smelter, getting rid of the lever, and it now means that the smelter will turn on and off on its own depending on whether there are items in the minecart. Pretty smart indeed. Thanks to Hugo's comments in the last video, apparently you can't hydrate farmland from beneath. It has to be next to it. So I added in some water to the side of my farmland, which would probably explain why the melon growth was so slow. I also added windows to the front on the downstairs portion of my base just to let a bit of extra light in. And you know what? I think it adds quite a lot. It's looking quite nice. And from a combination of comments of Hugo and Sonny, we added in some waterlogged trapdoors so that we could easily collect things from our sugarcane farm. And I have to say, it does make things a lot easier. Yes. Yes, it sure does. In addition to the progress we made in between episodes, I've also now installed Optifine because I've heard that it helps the game run better and smoother. So with a magical Alakazam, Optifine is enabled. And doesn't that glass texture look so much nicer? Also, just have to excuse the mad illager party going on over there. You really seem to like my wheat farm for some reason. So like I said, guys, in this episode, we are going to be heading over to our village just across the waterway there just to see if we can fortify and protect it a little bit. So I'm going to take a load of cobblestone and a load of dirt from our storage system just so we can patch any holes and then build a wall around the outside just to keep any baddies out of there. So. Let's get a little bit set up here. Also gonna take our stone cutter. I would have liked to sleep, but because of the number of illagers that are outside, uh, we're not allowed to. Luckily for me, he says luckily, it's almost daytime. So we'll plan our escape momentarily once the sun fully rises. So the rather nice thing about this is once I get out this door, I can make a run for it because the illagers are actually in my wheat farm. They won't be able to get past the trapdoors, I believe. It's just making that break for it. Here goes. All right, we made it, we made it. And hopefully by the time I come back, all those illagers will have this. Okay, yes, excellent. We have still got some villagers here. Now this is quite a big village, so it's going to take us quite a while to get a wall built up around this place. And I should probably look for damage in the floor first, because in previous worlds, that's been a big villager killer. Okay, so we, we've got one here. So we'll take some dirt. Get out of here. Didn't want to do that. Oh, we got another big hole here. 
Already this is taking a lot more resources than I thought it was going to take. So I'm going to get lazy. Normally I would like to fill in all of the holes here just so mobs can't spawn underneath. But I think for now we'll just try and be a bit conservative about the number of blocks we used to patch up these holes. Another hole bites the dust. How far does this village actually go? I mean, I could be patching holes here that I don't need to patch. Let's just check for any holes on this upper area over here. Okay, it's going to be interesting how I can cordon all this off, really. I don't know where these villages here are going to go. I mean, these just look like nitwits that don't have a profession. So we could block all these off up this top area and then block the bottom area off as well. I guess that would work. We definitely need to get moving on making this nice and secure. So I'm going to go off and start putting a wall around this, which hopefully if everything works out all right, you guys won't have to endure because you'll get to watch it super fast. Let's see what happens. And I just thought I'd take this opportunity just to say a massive thank you to everybody who has watched the episodes so far. You guys really have been giving me some really epic support on this. So thank you, thank you, thank you. All of your ideas and suggestions so far I've tried to take into account. I'm not just talking about comments on what I've built so far. I'm also talking about the comments that you guys have left me about the actual style of the video. I'm really trying to take my time with this series and not rush the episodes so I can actually concentrate and bring some good quality content and some really well edited content. So far your feedback has been invaluable and I think you like what I'm doing so far. It's always quite difficult when you watch other people's content and you don't want to copy what they're doing but you want to put your own spin on it. And hopefully, as you can see in this episode, I'm kind of doing that. I feel I was able to bring the progress in between episodes very short and concise in this episode and I'm really happy with the way I did that. Also, bringing you this time lapse because it would be a nightmare trying to edit through half an hour's footage to bring you. And to be fair, I think it would be pretty boring if you watch me do it. So once again, please do let me know in the comments if you like this time lapse and you like the way I presented the in-between episode progress in this video. So since we're coming to the end of this section, let me just sort of explain what we've done. We've built a complete cobblestone wall all the way around our village, which is accompanied by a one block deep trench. This will stop any mobs from being on the wall level and being able to shoot arrows in at us if we're in and around at night time. We've then covered the complete village with torches, something you didn't see in the time lapse, but I've been through and I've lit it up since that time lapse just to make it nice and safe at night time in case we're wandering around. All in all, our village should be pretty safe and sound now. Okay, so we're back in the village now on top of one of the hills and I just have to say, I find this generation really weird because villagers can't actually open gates so these villagers here are just sort of chilling uh which is interesting really i'll probably let them out into the general population real soon but what i want to do next is i want to work out the best position for the bell now the bell I believe is what we need to have in place to allow the villagers to gossip and then effectively breed. And at the minute it's in the middle of nowhere, not really accessible by any of the villagers. So I think what I will do, I'll bring it down to here. And then we might need to rebuild some of the houses as well around here and bring them a bit down here with the beds just to generate some population down here. Let me go and grab the bell and I will uh, find a nice place to put it. So I've picked up the bell and I think a good place would be probably here. Now like I said it's a 31 by 31 square area where the village actually come and sort of gather around and I believe any villager that has a green glowing particle on them is sort of in range of the bell. 
So we'll just have to keep an eye on this. Ultimately, in the future, I want to be able to have more than one bell, but we need to do some villager trading. We need the right villagers to do that. As you can see, the, the, the villagers have noticed the bell there. Were, they were making their way over to there as well. So that's all good. That seems to be working. So our next task, I think, is going to be to bring these two houses down here just to bring the villagers a little bit closer. As you can see, the villagers are already starting to come towards the bell, which is really, really nice. Hi, Mr. Villager. What can I do for you? Potatoes? No, not the minute. So yeah, we're going to go up here. We're going to tear down these houses and we will reposition them over here. It's going to take me a while to tear all of these down. So let me jump right to it and uh, we'll move these houses over here. Hello there. Nice to meet you. So after that little rebuilding session, we have successfully moved three of the houses down off that mountainside all the way down to here and rebuilt these kind of like market stalls, I guess they are. And yeah, everything went pretty well. So hopefully now that means that these villagers will begin breeding. We've also had some new arrivals in the village. We've had some nitwits. You just probably saw the baby villager there running into that house. And yeah, so far the village is doing really, really well. I'm really happy with where it's come so far. I guess the next thing we're going to need to do is probably think about getting some of these nitwits some trades. Also, we should maybe get those villagers out the pen as well and bring them down here. So maybe in between episodes, I'll bring the houses off that ledge down here and we can actually maybe just reduce the size of the village a little bit. For now, we need to concentrate on getting some professions for these villagers. And there are two main professions that I want for a start, and that is librarians and clerics. Librarians are really important for us at the minute because we really need to start looking at books and clerics in my other game. And yes, I'm quite aware that I keep referencing my other game quite a lot in this Let's Play. I got all my ender pearls from a cleric villager. So yeah, we need a brewing station and we need some lecterns. We've got two nitwits down here at the minute. So we've got potentially two villagers that we can start playing around with here. Man, the iron golems look angry. Okay, so we don't actually have any other workstation, so I guess we should head back to our base for now and we should craft up some workstations. I think I'm going to concentrate on lecterns and librarians first because mending is going to be really, really useful. 
One thing I forgot to mention at the beginning of this episode and didn't show at the end of last was how I actually get the pumpkins from the pumpkin farm into the pumpkin chest. And it is actually using hoppers, but we're actually, as long as I can do this without breaking anything, we're actually running the hoppers all the way across here, this hopper line. So they come down here all the way across there. And then you will see, hopefully, that they drop down into a chest over there. I don't think I can quite see. I can't quite do it. And all my stone bricks have now gone into the chest. Fantastic. But yeah, I'm just running the hoppers under the floor there to the pumpkin farm. I don't think I've even shown off how many pumpkins and melons I've got here. But as you can see, I've got quite a few. Seriously, what is it with mobs and spawning in my wheat farm? Ugh, I just don't see the appeal of it myself. Okay, I've got my lectern in hand and it's now time for Operation Mending Villager. Just don't question it. So what we're going to do is we're going to put our lectern down here. We're going to wait for the villager to come in and claim the workstation. And then we will block off the door. And we're going to keep breaking the workstation and getting new trades on this villager until we get mending. Now, obviously, at this stage, the mending trade isn't going to be particularly cost effective. Is that even the right way to put that? But I really want a mending book. So let's put down our lectern. Come on, I'm looking at you. There's a nice little workstation here with your name on it. We've blocked him in here. A baby villager in tow as well. So what have you got as your first efficiency? Five. Oh, that's a really good book. That's a really good one. Uh... No, 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 we're going to go for mending. Attempt number two. Death Strider. Three. Oh my God. I swear down this villager is teasing me right now. And before anybody says it, yes, it is possible to get mending first enchant on a villager because I did it in my previous world. Yep, there we go again, comparing to the other world. Oh, fortune three. I really want fortune three. <laughs> I really want Fortune 3. I guess it's just going to be a case now of what we're going to get first. Are we going to get Mending? Or are we going to have a Broken Axe? There it is! Attempt number 38 is Mending. All right, now we need to lock in this trade. So I'm going to have to go back real quickly. You stay there, my friend. Don't go anywhere. I'll be right back. I really need to put a gate on there, but we're going to go back quickly. We're going to go grab a bookshelf and a bookshelf even, and some trading items for the farmers in the hope we can get some emeralds. We'll lock in the first trade with a bookshelf, and then after that, we just need to get enough emeralds to be able to do the rest of the trades. But yes, we've always got mending. Success. I really like how this area in my base just seems to be an area where mobs just like rock up and say, hi, how you doing? Hi, let's see. Thanks for joining us today. Oh, here's another one. Here's his friend. I often come down here and there's Enderman or a zombie or something to that extent just stood there chilling. <laughs> oh, I find it quite comical. So we're back over here in the village. I think we'll start to call this episode the back and forth episode. And as you can see, I've got some melons and pumpkins here ready to do some trading with the farmers momentarily to get some emeralds. Fingers crossed we've got the right trades for the farmers. But I'm going to lock in this guy's trades right here. Have a book. Oh, I read the trade wrong. Have some emeralds. Okay. His trades are now locked in. He can... Go and be free and do what he needs to do. As you'll also notice, I made myself another lectern. So guess what we're going to do? And now we wait. Okay, answers on a postcard. Can we beat our record for getting decent shades? I'm going to go for Fortune 3 this time around. That's what we're going for. Well, we started off with a feather falling. Easy for me to say. What? Where did my lectern go? What did you do with it? What did you do with it? But seriously, where did it go? <sighs> it just vanished. You know what? He, he can wait. I, I can't be bothered at the minute. Let's go check out our farmers. What trades have we got with our farmers? Potatoes and beetroot. That's not helpful. So there's some zombies under there. Also, my lectins come back. 
I really don't know what's going on with this game at the moment. Farmer number two, I really hope you are more profitable. Wheat and carrots. We didn't bring any wheat with us. Guess where we're going back to? Oh, I want to be a traveller, going from A to B, because that's the life for me. Okay, we're back. Give me the diamonds. Okay, we've given him enough wheat and he is upgrading his trades. Where are you going? Come back, come back. 22 emeralds. We're still a little bit short. Still a little bit short. Oh, we got some breeding going on. All right, I've got to leave the farmers to uh, do their thing. Uh, excuse me. Mr. Villager. Would you please look at the workstation? Never work with kids and animals. In Minecraft, I think it's never work with villagers. Oh, Fortune 2. No, no. We're going for Fortune 3. Oh, mending again. We've already got a mending villager. Didn't, didn't you get the memo? Don't you nod at me. Look, just give me the trade I want. And you can go back to being... A happy villager with all the other happy villagers. That's all you gotta do. Just just play ball. Play nice. Dear Minecraft RNG gods. Please see it in your heart to give me Fortune 3. Oh, it's happened again. Oh. Get in there. No, no. Get in. 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 Thank you. You're not going nowhere. What, why, does it, why does it keep doing that? Really regretting my decision now to have mending first. I should have taken those Fortune 3s. Oh, I think I've seen mending like four times now. Okay, I think at this point I will take a Fortune 2 because this is just getting ridiculous. On the positive side, we've got 176 more attempts with this axe before it breaks. Is that really a positive? Okay, I'm going to take this fortune two for now because I don't think I can do any more trading with this guy. And I'll be honest, we've been here for a very long time. I mean, a stupidly long time doing this. Did we have a cow up here? Oh, that's not good. They can't gossip with my other villagers, right? Do you know what? Even after all that, I still didn't even get the... Alright, I'm not taking the risk. Also, yes, I can already see the comments. Combat style. Wait for the bar to refill. Right, those guys, you never saw anything, right? Okay, mending villager. Yes, we've got our first mending book. Let's get mand mending on here. Yes. Yes. Things are coming together. And that, guys, is pretty much going to bring us to the end of this episode. So we've got our village set up. We have got some librarians. We've got a fortune and a mending. Now, the reason I wanted the fortune was because, like I said earlier on, I've got a lot of ores here, which I need to break. I've been saving using my silk tuck pickaxe. So the next task will be just to get some more levels, build another diamond pick, and then we can enchant that with fortune and hopefully we will make some really good returns on those ores that we have still got to break. Thank you very much for watching. As always, I really appreciate your support. Hopefully you've liked the changes in this episode. Please do leave your feedback and comments. They are always appreciated and they really are helping me to shape these videos in a better way for you, the viewer. So once again, thank you very much for watching and until next time, goodbye.